Good morning, Kobe. Good morning, Pop. Good morning, Pop Mom. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How come my happy face? What happened to my happy face? What happened to that cup? Oh boy. Okay. Good morning. It's Tuesday morning, July 9, 2019. And for the gospel today, <clears throat> this gospel is very interesting. But we're not going to read the whole thing, okay? We'll comment on the first part. Uh, hi, Eddie. Good evening to you. Um, the Gospel is from St. Matthew, chapter 9, verses 32 to 38. So, a demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, he drives out demons by the prince of demons. Okay, that's the first part. And then the, uh, the other part uh, talks about um, um, the sheep and the shepherd. Okay? But let's comment on this, on this first part. Hello, Mariella. Let's comment on the first part, the the mute devil. Okay, this is a very this is a very uh, old image uh, in the gospel that uh, has been commented uh, a lot of times already, and um, it's very important for us to understand the effects of this mute devil. Okay, um, a demoniac who could not speak. A demoniac is somebody who is been possessed by the devil. And this particular devil is, is called the mute devil. Not that, not that devils are mute because they cannot really, I mean, they have no bodies, right? They are, they are non-material non, uh, uh, beings. So um, what, what is referred to here as the mute devil is that this kind of devil um, a devil or uh, a temptation, a demoniac temptation, mutes us in different ways. Okay, so this is the effect of a kind of temptation of the devil that mutes us, silences us in many more ways than one. So, in what ways does the devil mute us or silence us, and what in us? Thus, the devil or the presence of sin in us get to mute about us, get to silence about us. Okay. The first thing that the devil or that sin does, let's just talk about sin in general because that's what this is all about. The first thing that, that uh, sin mutes in us is the intellect. Our mind, our intellect, our way of knowing things. Okay, when we are in a state of sin, the devil tends to mute that intellect. Tends to, it tends to silence the intellect so that it does not become curious about finding out the truth. Okay? It silences the truth in us. It blurs our intellect to the extent that we cannot see through about what is true and what is good see we get to have blurry vision intellectually and we are not able to understand truth okay? that's one of the muting effects of the devil the second muting effect of the devil has to do with the will with our will with our power to do to work and to 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 uh, to perform good acts okay? because if you cannot see what is true and good intellectually okay, then the will has nothing to act on the will does not has no material to be able to do good things by because in the first place our intellect does not see what is good and true with things so the second muting has to do with the will, the power, the, the capacity to actually do good. And then there's also the physical muting. 
that happens with sin. We become physically, even physically, lazy. <laughs> Instead of being active in pursuing the good things we need to do in life, we tend to be lazy about it. <clears throat> even lazy about spiritual things. That's why there's a sin of sloth. Right? So that laziness, which, which is uh, a bodily tendency, it's a tendency of our bodies to be, to be less active in pursuing the things that are good, in pursuing to do good things. Okay? Even physically, we get weakened. Okay? The devil mutes our physical strength so that we, uh, we feel lazy and we don't want to work and we don't want to do our chores, we don't want to do our studies, we don't even want to get out of our way to help others. See, That's all part of the muting of the devil. Now, a, th a fourth kind of muting, which is kind of a combination between the intellect and the wills, muting, right, is the muting of our conscience. That ability to make a judgment between what is good and what is bad. Okay? And, and the muting of the conscience that will uh, not help us to, to understand the causes of our sinfulness it we we don't it mutes our you know the sense of uh, urgency and agitation when we are in a state of sin you see people whose consciences are not muted by the devil they feel agitated there's a kind of uneasiness when they are in a state of sin they want to they want to confess that right away they want to get rid of that sin but that's what the devil does not want to happen so he tries his best to mute our conscience, to silence our conscience, so that we don't feel that agitation to get out of that situation of sinfulness. And we become, yeah, <laughs> you know, we just become complacent with our state of sinfulness. Okay? That's what the devil does. The devil also, another kind of muting is the devil mutes our devotion to God, okay? our love for God. The devil tends to dampen that so that we are not we are not fired up. We are not fired up with the fire of love for God. So we tend to lose interest for the things of God. And therefore, we 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 do not feel like praying. We feel lazy to pray. We feel lazy to ask for help. See? When we need help from God. So the devil mutes our devotion. The devil mutes our sense of guilt. See, when, when our sin is already in front of us and we realize that we have, you know, we, we made a mistake or we did wrong, the devil tends to make us re think that, oh, you know, that's just okay. You don't have to feel guilty. You know, you don't have to feel guilty. That's okay. These things will pass. Don't worry about it. You just go ahead, do the normal things you're doing. Don't worry about it. You don't feel a sense of guilt because that's another effect of the mute devil. Okay? It does not make us guilty. He doesn't want us to be guilty about the wrong things we do. Okay? What else? The mute devil mutes our desires to improve. So we tend to lose interest in improving and we lose hope. We, we despair and we think, oh, I'm hopeless. I'm not going to improve anymore. You know, it's... It's pointless having to try because anyway, you know, I'll just be like this. This is really the way I am. <laughs> and um, nah, just leave me alone, you know. Okay, so there's no more desire to improve oneself because there's no more hope for improving oneself. Well, that's very bad. That's another effect of the devil. Another effect of the mute devil is it silences our voice. It does not want us to vocalize our need for help. The devil doesn't want us to talk. The devil wants us to be actually quiet and not talk about our difficulties and our challenges in life. The devil wants to keep us reclusive and just, just uh, hide in our sinful shell. And wouldn't want us to come out and ask for help from other people, particularly our parents. The devil wants to hide, wants to hide us 
from our parents and from the people who can help us. So the devil will put all sorts of shame in our soul that we don't want to talk about our, our sins. And then, and then that, that's not only about asking help from people, that will also include not being sincere in confession. That will also include now hiding things from the priest because we are stupid to think that uh, the, I, I, want, I want to protect my reputation. I don't want to, the priest to know that I am this bad. Okay? Uh, erroneously thinking that the priest will, 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 will mind these things you're telling him in confession and, and will, will, uh, will remember your sins. Of course not. The priest cannot do that. The priest is committing uh, a mortal sin if he will remember your sins. So there's really no point being shy or ashamed to admit your sins to the priest. Right? But the mute devil, that's what he will do. He is going to load up all sorts of shame on you so that you keep it to yourself. You keep your sinfulness to yourself and you don't talk about it. Okay? You cannot even admit it in confession. See? And that's what the devil, the mute devil does for us and look what happens when the demon was driven out the mute man spoke like magic right <laughs> the mute devil was taken out of the mute man oops all of a sudden the guy came back to normal and had life again See? life was restored in many different ways, from his way of looking at the truth, his intellect, his will, his conscience, etc., uh, came back to him after getting rid, after Jesus got rid of that mute devil. So we too have a solution, right? Get rid of the mute devil by going to confession. Kobe, very good. Confession. That is our modern miracle. Okay? Jesus may not be around us anymore to take that mute devil out of us, but the priest is always there in the confessional. We can always go to confession and ask that help so that that mute devil gets out of us. So that by the absolution of the priest in confession, we get rid of that mute devil and restore the life of grace in our souls. So let us let us always uh, take good advantage of confession and make a real, real, sincere confession every week that we go to confession. Right? That's what we need to do. Try to be very sincere all the time. Make a good confession. And lastly, lastly, on a daily basis, let us try to avoid occasions of sin. Okay? We all know what what our triggers for sin are. And if we don't, if we still don't know that by this time, then that means we're not doing a very good examination of conscience every night. Okay? Because if we do a sincere examination of conscience every night, and if we do a sincere examination of conscience before going to confession every week, then we will know what triggers us to sin. Well, those are the occasions of sin that we should avoid every day. The struggle begins there. Okay? In the daily avoidance of the occasions of sin. That way, we will help ourselves. That way, we're pushing away that mute devil far away from us so that he does not succeed in tempting us and pushing us to sin. Okay? Very good. That's it for us, everybody. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.